Hi there guys, Buddy here. So these two topics will be your first two topics in geomorphology. So let's explore the different types of rivers they are, as well as the different drainage patterns as these skills will help you master the section of paper one. So there are four different rivers that you need to know, right? The first being a permanent river, the second being a periodic river, the third being an episodic river, and the fourth being an exotic river. So let's start off with permanent rivers. So you may hear your teacher saying the word perennial river. Now permanent and perennial rivers are the exact same thing, it's just different names. So what are permanent rivers? Permanent rivers are going to be rivers that flow all year round. So whether it's the rainy season, whether it's the dry season, your river is still going to flow throughout the entire year. So the next point when they flow is just going to repeat exactly what I just explained, right? These permanent rivers are going to flow throughout the year, even during your dry seasons. So in South Africa, we get most of our rain during summer. So summer is generally known as your rainy season and your wet season. And since we get less rain in winter, winter is going to be known as our dry season. So what are some characteristics of permanent rivers? They are always going to contain water, even during droughts. They are often fed by regular rainfall, groundwater or snow melts from highlands. They are usually found in areas with high or consistent rainfall, example the eastern parts of South Africa like KZN and the Garden Route. And examples of your permanent rivers will be the Tugela River or your Amgeni River. Now if we take a look at the diagram on the left, right, the image in the upper left quarter will represent a permanent river. Now can you see how wide it is and can you see how much of water is actually flowing in that river. Now that is how you identify a permanent river. Now let's take a look at periodic or seasonal rivers. Now your teacher can also refer to this river type as a non-perennial river. So just keep that in mind. So what is a periodic river? These are rivers that will flow only during the rainy season. So that means that, you know, in your dry season, which is winter, it is actually going to dry up. So when do these rivers actually flow? They're going to flow during the wet season, typically summer in South Africa. So what are some characteristics of periodic rivers? Your periodic rivers are going to dry up or they're going to have very little flow during the dry season. They are going to be found in semi-arid regions like parts of the Free State, the Northwest or Limpopo. Their flow depends on local rainfall patterns and their riverbeds might remain dry or only have puddles during winter. Now if you take a look at the diagram on the left again, the image on the upper right section will represent a periodic river. Now since that river is actually flowing, it will mean that that picture was actually taken during summer, which was a wet season. So episodic rivers, what are they? They are rivers that flow only after rare, heavy rainfall events. So these episodic rivers can literally remain dry for years, because remember the point mentions rare, heavy rainfall. So after years, you know, once it rains again, this river is then going to flow. And you need to understand that this river is not going to flow forever. It's only going to flow for either a few hours or a few days. So when do these rivers actually flow? They flow infrequently, maybe once or twice a year or even less. You know, sometimes maybe once every few years. What are some characteristics of your episodic rivers? So the first will be that it's either found in arid or desert areas. Examples are the Karoo or the Namib regions. They can remain dry for years and their riverbeds are often dry and sandy most of the time. The water may flow for a few hours or days only. Now again, if you look at the diagram on the left, the image in the lower left quadrant is going to represent an episodic river. Now can you see how dry the riverbed actually is? And can you see the lack of vegetation as compared to a permanent river? And now we are looking at the last type of river, and that's the exotic river. So what is an exotic river? So exotic rivers are rivers that are going to originate in wetter regions, but they are going to flow through a drier region. So let me break that down a bit. So let's say you have region A, which is a wet region, and that wet region is going to receive a lot of rainfall. Now, this rain is then going to flow from region A to region B, which will be a drier region and that river will be known as an exotic river. So when are these rivers going to flow? They are usually permanent because they are sustained by rainfall in their source area. 
And what are some characteristics of these exotic rivers? The first is that they bring water to dry or desert regions. They are important for agriculture and life in arid areas. And an example of an exotic river will be the Orange River. It's going to rise in the Lesotho Highlands and it's going to flow west through dry areas to the Atlantic Ocean. Now, if you look at the last image within the diagram, you will see an exotic river. Now, let's take a look at the different types of drainage patterns. So, there are seven types of drainage patterns that you will be required to know. So, the first type will be known as a dendritic drainage pattern. And this pattern is going to look like the branches of a tree, right? The main river is like the trunk, as you can see in the diagram. And the tributaries are the branches, right? Now, if you look at it, it is also going to sort of resemble a leaf, right? And the tributaries are going to be the veins of the leaf. Now, if you take a leaf and you hold it up to the light, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, if you look closely again, you're going to see that the tributaries are going to join the main river at acute angles. So an acute angle is going to be an angle that will measure less than 90 degrees. So on what type of rock structure will this drainage pattern be found? It will be found in areas with uniform homogeneous soft rock that is evenly eroded and there's going to be no structural control like faults or joints. The rock is massive and horizontal. So basically it's going to be found on these horizontal sedimentary and the massive igneous rocks. So the second type of drainage pattern will be the rectangular drainage pattern. So your rivers and your tributaries follow straight paths and make sharp right angle bends. So these are 90 degree turns. So now remember in terms of your dendritic drainage pattern, your tributaries are going to form angles that are less than 90 degrees. So if you see a diagram with straight paths and 90 degree bends, then chances are that it's going to be a rectangular drainage pattern. So what do we know about its underlying rock structure? It's going to occur in jointed or faulted rock where cracks guide the river's direction. And it's common in areas with fractured hard rock or fault lines. So again, it's going to form on igneous rocks as well as your horizontal sedimentary rocks that will have many joints. So for those of you that don't actually understand what joints are, joints are like your natural lines or breaks in solid rock. And your joints are going to form because of either pressure, whether it's cooling, and it can even occur due to your drying of the rock, right? And unlike faults, your joints don't have movement. They're just going to be cracks. So now let's look at the third type of drainage pattern, which is the radial centrifugal drainage pattern. So rivers flow outwards in all directions away from a central high point. Now that is very, very important, right? The rivers are going to flow away from a central high point and it's going to resemble the spokes of a wheel. Now, what is this high point, central high point that we're talking about? We are talking about either a volcano or a dome. The river is going to flow away from your volcano or your dome. And what is the underlying rock structure? So it's going to be found on domes, volcanic cones or hills where water flows down the slopes. Your structure has a central highland from which rivers diverge. And again, it's going to be associated with massive igneous rocks. Now, if you take a look at the diagram, you can see that the arrow is going to be pointing away and that is going to represent the direction of the flow of the river. So that's going to be away from a central point. Now, our fourth drainage pattern will be the radial centripetal drainage pattern. So your rivers are going to flow inwards towards a central low-lying area like a basin or crater. Now read this very carefully, right? Your rivers are going to flow inwards towards a central low-lying area. That's going to be the exact opposite of the previous drainage pattern. So your radial centripetal drainage pattern will be found in basins or craters where the land dips in the middle. And it's the opposite of centrifugal, your water converges at the center. Remember with your centrifugal, your water is going to flow away from a central high point. But if you look at your century petal, it's going to flow towards a low-lying area. Can you see the difference between the two? One is going to be flowing away from a high area and one is going to be flowing towards a low-lying area. And again, this drainage pattern is going to be associated with your massive igneous rocks. So our fifth drainage pattern will be the deranged or your intermittent drainage pattern. There's going to be no clear pattern. Your rivers are going to appear disorganized with swamps, lakes and meandering courses. 
and your water flow may be seasonal or inconsistent. Now, as you can see, the diagram is going to be very haphazard. There's not going to be a set pattern. And also part of this is because, you know, it's going to develop from the disruption of a pre-existing drainage pattern. That means that it was previously a different type of drainage pattern. And because that was disrupted, it will either become a deranged or an intermittent drainage pattern. Now, this drainage pattern is going to be found in areas that are recently affected by glaciation, tectonic uplift or lava flows land is young or it's recently disturbed with poor drainage. Our sixth drainage pattern will be the trellis drainage pattern and it's arguably one of the easiest drainage patterns that you can identify. Well, at least in my opinion. So the main river is going to flow straight with parallel tributaries that are going to be joining at right angles and it's sort of going to resemble a garden trellis or a ladder. So now we can see that your main streams are going to be parallel to each other. And when we say they are parallel to each other, we mean that, you know, it's when your rivers and streams flow next to each other, obviously in the same direction. And this usually happens on steep or uniform slopes. Now, as you can see, your tributaries are going to be joining your main stream at 90 degree angles. And this pattern is going to be found in folded or tilted sedimentary rocks with alternating bands of hard and soft rock. So your rivers follow valleys, soft rock, and are blocked by your ridges, which is hard rock. And for our last drainage pattern, we have the parallel drainage pattern. So your rivers and your tributaries run almost parallel to each other, often straight and close together. Now, can you see how close those uh, tributaries and the rivers are to each other? They're going to be parallel to each other and they're going to be very close. And this is going to occur in areas with steep slopes or elongated landforms. And it's usually associated with uniform, steep, hard rock surfaces or elongated ridges. So as you can see, you know, there's quite a few that you will need to know. But all you just need to do is look for what makes them unique, right? What makes each design unique? And like that, you'll sort of get the hang of it. Anyway, that was just an introduction to geomorphology. In our next video, we're going to dive deeper, so stay tuned for that. I want to thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. All the best with your studies. Stay cool, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.